So I think throughout my path here in medical school, I've had a variety of aha moments, if you will, when it came to the powers of osteopathic medicine. And certainly my definition and understanding of the philosophy of osteopathic medicine has evolved and changed uh, throughout my career here in medical school. But I think to draw upon one particular moment where I truly began to understand how critical and how powerful osteopathic medicine and the philosophy that we learn is, is when I was working with my stepmom uh, in the last days of her life. She was unfortunately diagnosed with cervical cancer at 46 years old and endured a year and a half battle with cervical cancer. And during the time uh, that she did have the cancer, I would sit down whenever I was in Utah where she was living at the time and I would try my best to provide her with manipulation and again education about her illness and some homework if you will so that we could try to facilitate as much health as possible with her body but it certainly wasn't until her last days uh, when I did hospice care with my stepmom that I truly understood the power of osteopathic medicine. In hospice it is certainly beyond words, I think, the emotional journey that family members go through uh, with the person that is trying to pass to the other side. And I went on that journey with my father for eight days when I returned to Utah. And unfortunately, with hospice care and also with the end of life, there is a product of terminal agitation that can develop in the patient, in particular my stepmom for this instance, which is characterized by flailing of the extremities and moaning spells that are at times unbearable uh, for family, me family members to experience and in many ways I felt helpless. Because we are taught as osteopathic physicians and osteopathic medical students to facilitate health and trying to restore health for the human body. Unfortunately for her at that time, there was no restoration of health. There was no facilitation back to that healthy ballerina or dance teacher that she was a year and a half prior. But I took it upon myself when she was having these spells and this agitation to decide, and I decided to do what I was trained to do, and that was lay my hands on the patient, and that being my stepmom, and try to do as much as I could with manipulation. And when I placed my hands on my stepmother during one of these spells, the curiosity that my father had when he was looking at me and also the curiosity that I had in myself was a powerful moment for me because I didn't know what would happen. But lo and behold, after doing some manipulation for a few minutes, her terminal agitation began to wane. And for that brief period, her journey towards the other side, I guess, grasped a certain amount of dignity again. and. It was temporary and she continued to have these spells intermittently until she passed to the other side. But every time she had these spells, I would lay my hands on her and I would try my best to manipulate her body and help her regain that dignity. And again, she would basically wane in these terminal agitation moments. And that's when I truly understood the powerful aspects of osteopathic medicine and certainly osteopathic manipulative treatment that we learn here at Western University. And this skill set by far and away is very unique to our profession. And it made me so blessed to understand the path and the journey that I have gone through now in osteopathic medical school. And it made me excited to keep up this philosophical approach and be comfortable laying my hands on all patients in whatever condition they are in because we can affect their lives both restoring health but also perhaps regaining dignity in those last moments.